Bill O'Reilly here, Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. A lot of people are quitting their jobs in the USA. An NBA star gets the boot for refusing the vax. Grocery stores have shortages of just about everything. Gas prices top five bucks in New York City. Also ahead, a quiz. Are you ready for it? But first, more than 4 million Americans quit their jobs in August, the most in 20 years. That's 3% of the entire workforce. Biggest losses taking place in restaurants and retail. Economists blame the troubling stat on government giveaways. 16 million adults now receive unemployment benefits every month. 12 million no longer face evictions for unpaid rent. 59 million Americans are on some kind of federal welfare program. So that's why some don't want to work. The Brooklyn Nets basketball team banning point guard Kyrie Irving for refusing to be vaxxed. The former Rookie of the Year is barred from participating until he gets the medicine. Irving has not elaborated on his reasons for remaining unvaxxed, but he's not getting paid. And he's got a four-year contract valued at $136 million. Too much math for me. Walmart, Target, other stores warning shoppers of new shortages heading into the holidays. According to retailers, five essential items are becoming harder to find. Beef, pork, chicken, juice, and snacks. Suppliers blame the empty shelves on vacant positions at processing plants. If you can find whatever you're looking for, you're going to pay more. The cost of steak, for example, hot dogs, chicken wings, eggs, all up 12%. This is going to come back to haunt the Biden administration. Drivers in the Big Apple paying more for gas than at any point since 2014. Global demand sending the cost for a gallon in Manhattan above $5. The national average stands at $3.25. Just eight states in the country at prices below $3. A typical fill-up in New York City is now 92 bucks. That's $5,000 a year on gasoline. The editorial board of the Wall Street Journal blaming Joe Biden's burdensome regulations for the surge in gas prices. And on that note, we have a quiz about the Biden administration. Right back with it. Listen, if you haven't taken advantage of these record low mortgage rates, now is the time. They're not going to be here much longer. Fed Chief Janet Yellen has actually said that. Every day that passes, you know what's going to happen. We're at risk of seeing higher rates, and it's going to cost you money. So please find out what your options are right now. You can get a free mortgage review by calling our friends at American Financing, where you can save up to $1,000 a month. And you can pre-qualify right now by calling 888-462-9557. 888-462-9557. Or visit AmericanFinancing.net. NMLS 182334. NMLSConsumerAccess.org. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day, a quiz for you. So we had a little fun on the No Spin News. That's my television broadcast, which you can see on BillOReilly.com or other outlets across the country. So it's a short quiz on the current state of the federal government. You just answer yes or no to the following questions, which all fall under the banner of, does it make sense? Question number one, does it make sense to allow millions of foreign nationals to enter the USA unsupervised? Yes or no? Does it make sense to abandon Afghanistan completely, leading to human rights abuses by the Taliban? Does it make sense to shut down the Keystone Pipeline, then turn around and ask Saudi Arabia to expand oil sales? Does it make sense to support 
critical race theory teaching in public schools that divides children on skin color. Does it make sense for the federal government to spend so much money that inflation explodes? Does it make sense to support no bail laws that allow criminals to commit more crimes? Does it make sense to be one of only seven countries in the world that allow unrestricted abortions at the federal level? Does it make sense to oppose voter IDs? Does it make sense to say that white supremacists are a bigger terror threat than the jihadists? And finally, question number 10, does it make sense for a president of the United States to accuse his own country of systemic racism? Yes or no? Now, if you answered no to all 10 questions, you may have a keen grasp of reality. But if you answered yes to the questions, CNN would like to hire you. I did this quiz because the Biden administration is having a very hard time. But millions of Americans will not acknowledge that. So me, being a simple man, I put 10 simple questions up for debate. Yes or no. Very, very easy. And all 10 questions are absolutely happening. So when you discuss politics with your liberal friends or your Democratic friends, these questions, foreign nationals flooding into the USA, Afghanistan, Keystone Pipeline shutdown, CRT, inflation, no bail laws, abortion unrestricted by the feds, voter IDs, white supremacy, systemic racism. All of these things are in play. And I have to tell you, I have never in my lifetime seen a more screwed up federal government than the one we have now. I'm Bill O'Reilly. I approve that message by actually putting it together. For more honest news analysis, please go to BillOReilly.com. And we would like you to write to us. Bill at BillOReilly.com, Bill at BillOReilly.com, name in town, if you wish to opine. If you think I'm being unfair, let me know. In a moment, something you might not know. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are seven reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Monthly cash flow payouts of 10% annualized. Bonuses to 21% targeted. They strategically locate in lower risk, high demand areas people want to move to. New construction is short on supply. Real estate affords diversification and safety from stock market risk. Their short and long-term strategy provides for steady returns right now. NRIA is an industry leader with a 15-year proven track record. So, if you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, start your due diligence at nria.net. Or you can call 800-800-1414. That's easy. 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at nria.net. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. The decade is off to a very dubious start. I think we all know that. 2020 will go down in history for COVID, a bitterly divided nation, reckless spending, and far-left policies. If all that sounds familiar, it should. We have been here before in America, the Roaring Twenties. A century ago, the nation was struggling to recover from the Spanish flu pandemic, and U.S. troops were returning home from World War I. Inflation went way up. The stock market was up, up, up. After the World War, the USA would rise as the only economic superpower on the planet. New York became the center of world finance, generating tremendous wealth for those investing on Wall Street. 
America's gross domestic product more than doubled between 1920 and 1929. The decade was indeed roaring. But all of that money created a surge in new technologies. Average families installed electricity, purchased cars, even vacationed during the summer months in exotic places. The nation's aviation industry seized the world's attention as people like Charles Lindbergh experimented with transatlantic flight. Society changed dramatically. American women won the right to vote. Minority neighborhoods like Harlem, New York, experienced a renaissance that spawned jazz and other art forms. The era also witnessed the arrival of mass media. By the end of the decade, the radio was in more than 12 million American homes. But all of that ended 92 years ago this month. On October 18, 1929, the stock market crashed. Panic set in. Millions of people ran to banks to withdraw their money. Poverty descended. In less than three years, the U.S. market was worth just 20% of its entire value. The stock market lost 80% of its worth. Nearly half of America's banks failed. And unemployment was approaching 15 million people, or 30% of the workforce. The Roaring Twenties were over. The Great Depression had begun. I hope this decade we're in turns out better than that. Back after this. How much equity do you have in your home? Cybercrime experts alerting homeowners that the more equity you have, the greater the chance criminals will target you. Home title theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in the USA. And home title lock, America's leader in home title protection, is warning homeowners that you may already be a victim and not know it. Here's how. Cyber thieves search hundreds of public databases for high-quality homes. They find your home's online title, forge your signature stating you sold your home, then take out loans with your equity. Insurance or common identity thefts programs do not cover you. So, register your address now to see if you are already a victim, I hope not, and receive a complete title history of your home a $100 value free. Please go to HomeTitleLock.com, HomeTitleLock.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.